Almost everyone likes the idea about owning any generation Porsche 911, and that's why, especially in Australia, you can't find one for less than $30,000. Even if you buy the cheapest Porsche 911 in the entire country, you may still end up with a hole in your wallet to try and keep the damn thing on the road. I imagine that Porsche parts are not cheap. So what I've done is I've put together a list of four Porsche-esque vehicles that might be similar to the 911. Keep in mind the 911 is very hard to compare to considering its prestige, but these might come close to it in either acceleration or handling or hopefully both under $15,000. So let's get straight into it. Starting with the cheapest alternative on this list, which you can find for as low as $5,000. It's the Chrysler Crossfire. Questionably, not the best looking car going around, but for the price, could be worthy of your time. This Chrysler sports car is not what you'd expect because in reality, it is actually a redesigned Mercedes-Benz SLK 320. At the time of its creation, both Chrysler and Mercedes were subsidiaries of Daimler Chrysler Group, therefore resulting in the production of this two-seater roadster made up of 80% Mercedes parts. The interior is extremely basic and the exterior may not appeal to everyone, but you have the luxury of choice between a coupe or a convertible. This Roadster is powered by a 3.2 liter V6 Mercedes engine making 215 horsepower and can be found in a 5-speed automatic or a 6-speed manual transmission. Overall, Chrysler claimed it could launch from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.5 seconds, which when you think about it, isn't terrible for the used price you're going to pay. But the Crossfire does have some drawbacks. The automatic gearboxes are known to be clunky, therefore making the manual options more expensive. And when it comes to handling, it needs much more refinement, which can get costly. There still is good news, however, because Chrysler did release a refined performance model called the SRT6, which you may still be able to find for as low as $14,000 if you're lucky. Based off the Mercedes-Benz AMG C32, the SRT6 makes 330 horsepower from AMG's 3.2 liter V6 supercharged engine, which Chrysler has claimed to put down a zero to 100 km per hour time in 5.5 seconds, which is a massive difference from the NA version. Other exclusive features to the SRT6 included suspension and brake modifications, a front fascia air dam, and a fixed rear spoiler, which the NA version did not get. However, it only came with a five-speed automatic transmission consistent with other AMG cars of that era. Crossfires have dropped dramatically in value and are much cheaper than their Mercedes SLK counterparts. But just note that the factory Chrysler parts used on this car are now very scarce and expensive, so you want to avoid buying one with any missing or broken Chrysler bits. Hit that like button if you're enjoying the video so far, but let's move on to the next alternative. The Mercedes SLK 280 comes to mind. These super stylish rear wheel drive roadsters can be found for as low as $9,000. Defined by its long bonnet, it has aged gracefully and even includes a complex folding hardtop rather than the standard soft top technology, which contributes to its style. Out of its 3 liter V6 engine, it makes 228 horsepower, which Mercedes claims a 0 to 100 km per hour time in 6.3 seconds. One major downside is, although these did come out with a 6 speed manual gearbox, the chances of finding one under $15,000 or even at all is as good as winning the lottery. This means only a 7 speed automatic is available and if you're like me, you'd probably just swipe left as being stuck with an automatic isn't too thrilling. The SLK prides itself on comfort and class, making it more suitable for cruising rather than mountain roads or track days. When looking for one to purchase, keep an eye out for any roof related issues as they are expensive to fix or replace. Otherwise, it is said that the SLK is one of the more reliable models in the Mercedes lineup if maintained correctly. So far, I've taken you through two different options that on paper will keep up with the cheapest 911s on the used market at the moment. 
But these two options lack characteristics such as handling, which makes the Porsche 911 so desirable. But I believe that these next two options have that all figured out. It's the German brand that are responsible for arguably the most fun manual sports cars of the last two decades. And for as low as $10,000, get yourself a rear wheel drive 3 liter V6 BMW Z4 E85 Roadster. To some, this was the best looking Roadster BMW produced at the time if you had sore eyes looking at the Z3 for too long. These came out with either a 5 speed automatic or an exciting 6 speed manual gearbox making 228 horsepower being the lightest and most thought out car on this list so far. BMW claims it will achieve a 0 to 100 km time in 5.9 seconds. You can choose from either the coupe or convertible version, however in Australia the coupes are quite scarce and will most likely cost a premium. This this same statement can also be said about finding a manual, however if you play the waiting game you can still find one for under $15,000. Now if you're not very patient and you want a manual then you do have options because the Z4 E85 also came out with a 2.5 litre V6 engine. And yes the 2.5 litre is definitely not the same as it makes 25% less power than the 3 litre and when it comes to performance and handling it is less refined but if you set that aside it can still be found as low as $8,000 with a 5 speed manual transmission. That said fun cheap BMW are normally thrashed and under maintained so you should only purchase a Z4 with a squeaky clean service history and preferably a pre-purchase inspection because you don't want to get stuck with its many problems when it's neglected. When looking for a convertible do your own research to ensure that you can spot potential faults with the roof mechanism as this could be very expensive to fix which seems to be a trend with these European cars so far. Now, if European cars are not for you, then this last option might be exactly what you've been waiting for. Literally, the most reliable and the fastest vehicle on this list. It's the Nissan 370Z, which you can find for as low as $15,000 as a coupe or convertible. From its 3.7 liter V6 engine, it is capable of a very healthy, 332 horsepower that Nissan claims can achieve a 0 to 100 km time of 5.3 seconds and according to owner reviews even lower if you're driving the automatic version. This rear wheel drive Japanese sports car came out with a 7 speed automatic that includes steering wheel mounted paddle shifters or a 6 speed manual that on the sports package of this car included synchro rev match technology. And if you want rev matching, you're going to have to pay a premium, so don't even worry about it. Nissan has practically maintained the same technology for the 370Z for over a decade now, which is exactly why this car got and still gets so much hate. But see this as a massive benefit, since parts will be cost effective and stay in circulation for many years to come. Yes, the cost is at the higher end of the spectrum than compared to other cars on this list, but the Nissan 370Z has an abundant fan base, support network, and comes with minimal reliability issues. Although every car has a set of common issues which you should investigate when purchasing any car, the main issue you would need to worry about is the previous owner's history. You'll need to look out for shoddy owners as they might have installed cheap tacky mods, neglected services, completed bodgy repair work, but also could have frequently tracked the car without being honest when it comes to the sale. If you can land a well-maintained example with a solid service history, then you can't go wrong with this high revving, naturally aspirated six cylinder 3.7 liter engine. Overall, out of the four vehicles, I think that Nissan 370Z is possibly the best out of these. It is the fastest, it is the most reliable, considering all of them are European cars except for this one. And it's been around forever. So you're gonna have support, you're gonna have parts, as I mentioned, plenty of circulation of parts, but I think it looks the best out of all of them. I have never owned one, I've driven one before in automatic, I've never driven a manual one, and it's piqued my interest. I might start looking to buy one for a future project car, we shall see. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. And make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos, thanks.